I'm in the book of John this morning. Well, I will be in the book of John. <laughs> if you'll turn there with me. I, we, we've begun each week that we've been speaking to this um, in Acts chapter 1 and also Acts chapter 2 where it says they began to speak in other tongues of the Spirit gave utterance. And also Acts 1.8 where we're told the disciples to wait for the promise of the Father. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So that's the context. God is a supernatural God. And God is doing supernatural ministry and miracles beyond that we could ever imagine. And God, God is desirous that that continue on. This past Wednesday night. And, and I, I'm going to give a commercial for this every time I come together. If, if, if you're missing Wednesday night... You're missing. I, I'm telling you, you you want to grow in your faith. I'm not saying you have to. Yeah, that the only way to grow is being wasted. But I'm, we are, we are, we we've just got through talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and uh, I'm not exactly for sure where God is leading. It could be on the fruit of the Spirit uh, this the Wednesday. I'm not for sure yet, so don't hold it to me. But we we get down to some nitty gritty business of with God. God just shows up. And, and it is revealed even by people how uh, just the discussions and we give time for that for questions and uh, encouragement. It is, it's just phenomenal. And so one we got in discussion on was that God says, you'll do more than I did. Can you, can that, can you even wrap your thoughts around that, that God says, you'll do more? It's like, how, how can we do that? What does more mean? I don't have the clue on what it all means. I mean, there's more today than we could have ever imagined that propagates, that, uh, that sends the gospel forth. I mean, satellites moving, I mean, sharing ministries all around this world. I mean, churches on every corner. And so, yes, I believe more. But I also believe, too, more individually through us. How many is expecting miracles through your life? More. Somebody shout more. Amen. Well, that's where we've been at. So God says in John chapter 4, verse 23, some great passage of scripture. This is in the passage and the context when Jesus was talking to the woman at the well and this, uh, the Samaritan Jew issue and uh, uh, what the Samaritans believed. And they, of course, they couldn't even have contact together and uh, audacity. The disciples couldn't believe that Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman. But, you know, Jesus knows how to transcend every racial issue, every circumstance, and uh, nothing is a barrier to the Lord. He is the one that calms all situations. And he went through this and, and he began to speak to this woman. And, and I won't take time to go on all that, but verse 23, something that he spoke uh, and she was getting the idea of, uh, well, this is how we were taught to worship on this mountain. This is where this place we were taught to uh, that we must worship here in Jerusalem. Uh, she said, I, I know you're a prophet and our fathers worshiped on this mountain. And, and you Jews claim that the place where you must worship is Jerusalem. So they were not bantering uh, 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 accusation or uh, against each other, but she was sharing her thoughts and Jesus was sharing the one who said, you know, if you'll drink of me, what did I give? I'll give you an incredible life, incredible that you'll never thirst again. And so it's in that context. And now go down to verse number 23. He says it this way. He says, a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in what? Spirit and in truth. And it says, for they are the kind these individuals that will what? Worship spirit and truth. And we're going to define that in a moment. But it's these, these are the type of worshipers he, that the Bible says he seeks. Verse 24 says, God is spirit and his worshipers must, say it with me, his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Father, thank you for your word that is so alive. We honor you. Praise you for your anointing this morning. We give you thanks in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. Jesus said he's looking for those that will worship in spirit and in truth. Now, to kind of get us, kind of get us started here for a moment, and uh, we're talking about supernatural worship, and then we're going to end up with supernatural victory. And uh, we're just going to just end up for a few moments worshiping around the throne here this morning, uh, the throne of God and worshiping him together. 
But uh, I've heard this scripture all my life, as, as, as in our, I should say, my ministry life and being raised in church. And, and we hear the scripture, we say it, God's looking for those that worship in spirit and the truth. And we kind of use it as a, as a, uh, a builder of faith and builder of our, uh, what we know God's called us to do to worship. And yes, God wants to worship in spirit and truth and we get excited about it. But we, do we really know what it means to be a supernatural worshiper? What does it mean to really worship? What does it mean and what does it not mean? Folks, I, I'm, I'm just going to say very strong, honestly, this morning, there are some things that are happening today in the church. When I say the church, I'm not talking about a specific locale. I'm talking about in the church. That is, I believe, true worship, and there are some things that's true flesh. You know, I, I just think that very honestly. There's some things that, I, you know, it's more flesh and it's not God. And it's, it's you know, it, just, it blesses the flesh. I mean, I, I believe in having a great time, but it blesses the flesh and doesn't bless God. And, and I think there's some dangerous things that, have ha- that are happening that we need to understand what true worship is, what it means to really worship. Um, the, the Bible says here, several things, just a thought here, the place of worship is not the issue. If all you do is get ready to get your praise on on Sunday morning and don't worship, something's wrong with that. If you can worship in here, but you can't worship there, something's not right about that. Well, my place of work, this is, this is my house. I, I, I go to First Assembly of God, and we, we, we go for Sunday morning worship. Well, what about your Tuesday worship? I mean, can you get up on Tuesday and worship the Lord? Can y'all get up on Monday and say, I don't want to go. Ah, It's just, it's work again. This is the day the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. (laughs) Worship is not about a setting. Worship is about an attitude. And so his primary concern it's worship in a particular place. The woman said, well, we were taught to worship here and you were taught to worship there. God says, I'm a spirit and I'm calling you to worship me wherever you're at in spirit and in truth. I mean, oh, come on now. Y'all get your praise on in here and it's good. It's awesome. Uh, loud, quiet, uh, jump, shout, whatever. It's great. There's a time and place for everything. I understand that. But worship is more than just a place. If we can't worship on a Monday and Tuesday, something's wrong with our worship on Sunday because we've uh, denigrated it to just a place. Secondly, he says in spirit, it points uh, to a level or depth at which true worship occurs. Sometimes worship starts and stops right here. I mean, you can... Now, now, please go in on this. You can teach children how to worship from here. But you can't teach them how to worship from here. That they have to learn in their relationship with God. Because kids can mimic all of us. How many, how many kids growing up, you grew up in church, when I say kids, adults, how many of you played church growing up? You play church. You knew how to shout. I mean, people, I've been, in, I've been in churches. People can say, yeah, amen, pastor. They don't mean it. You just got a crescendo going on. How many understand music, and, and music is great. I, I, I believe in music. But sometimes music can move you to a place that's not true worship. That don't mean it can't move you to a place that is true worship. Sometimes it can become emotionalism. People say, well, I, I, I don't want to get emotional in my worship, so I'm, I'm, I'm very somber in my worship. No, you're very prideful. You don't want anybody, to, you don't want to get excited about anything. So come on now. Worship is not just a place, and worship is not just uh, from my mouth. You know, the Bible speaks about some worship from their, their mouth, but their, their heart is far from him. Turn to somebody and say, where's your heart? Come on now. True worship has got to come from the heart, and it has to reflect godly character and a deep inner devotion to God. And also he said, worship in spirit and in truth. That word truth is a primary characteristic of God's nature, and it's personified in his son, Jesus Christ, and it's also at the heart of the gospel message of Christ. 
True worship must be a reflection of and response to the truth of the Father that is revealed in the Son through and through Jesus Christ and through the Spirit. And those who encourage worship that is not based on the truth and teachings of the Word of God have rejected the only real and legitimate foundation of what true worship is. True worship, I, we, I, and, and I don't even necessarily like this terminology. Okay? I don't like this, but we've had, quote, and I'll put it in quotes here, but we've had what they call worship wars. Now, I've been involved in music and singing all my life before I wanted to. My dad would have me. I've been involved, and, and I, have seen, I have seen a transition of different styles of music, different way of worship, uh, transcended uh, ages, and then, uh, uh, and, and I've seen it music. I remember when even as a, uh, a kid, when, and I'm, on pre, I'm dating myself, I understand this. I mean, I remember years ago when uh, my mom and dad used to take me to the all-night gospel scenes. The Kingsman. The Happy Goodman family. I can't do it for a city. I'm dating myself. Some of y'all have no clue what I'm talking about. Rusty Goodman singing. See, now all of a sudden, y'all, some of y'all are getting a good feeling. Wow. And I did too because it meant something to me. He, Rusty Goodman used to sing this, wrote the song, Who am I that a king would bleed and die for? How many of you never heard that song in your life? That's probably 60, 70% of this house. And so I remember going to all-night scenes in Bonifay, Florida, and seeing, being raised on hymns. And, and that place, and, and please do not think I am making any fun or making anything, because that's my foundation. You'll see me go old school real quickly sometimes into hymns. I, I, there is a strong foundation of words that sometimes, some of the songs today have nothing to do with Jesus. Okay, just because you get a crowd of people together and get people shouting doesn't mean you've had a worship experience. The Bible says worship in spirit and in truth. So I saw a transition of worship styles stylistically from my younger uh, grade school grade, uh, days to in my teen years, and I started seeing when, how many remember when truth came out? You're talking about truth of God? No, it's always been out. Uh, truth was a group. It was a contemporary group. One of the first, uh, them and, oh, I'm trying to remember some of the others, if y'all know some of them. Petra. Oh, wow, that, that takes me back to my youth pastor days. I mean, and it started, things started changing, and so I, I would start going to the truth concerts in, in, in school, and, and I saw even in church transition from singing from a hymn book to now we're singing on the wall. Now, please, not off the wall. Okay? But we're singing, and now today we have electronically. Now, does that mean because we don't sing from a book, we're not worshiping? No. Well, what if we do sing from a book? Does that mean we're not in style? Nope. There's just different styles that people, now this is not my, 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 um, what I'm trying to hang on to. I'm just trying to bring a point out, so stay with me. Don't, please, tell somebody beside you, don't get offended. Because I'm not here to put anybody's style and tradition of worship down. But sometimes, well, we're going to be like the Samaritan woman if we're not singing the latest, greatest course. Well, I worship when I sing that. Well, I'm not worshiping because I don't know those newfangled songs and loud stuff, and so I can't worship unless I'm singing what I heard when I was a kid. And the reality is we can be so tied up to a traditional form 
that it loses the value of what true worship is all about. Everybody smile. And this is what they have called worship wars over the years. People that have grew up singing hymns, and now they sometimes feel like, well, well, uh, what, where's, where's the old songs at? I don't, I, I don't know this new stuff. But then I have also seen people that say, well, I'm willing to forego what I feel I like to sing in order to reach a new generation with a new style of worship. So the idea is not the song. If you can only worship with one style of song, something's wrong with your worship. Because worship is not about a song. Worship is about an attitude. Worship is not about if the lights are on or lights are off. Worship is not about if you got a 10-band member or one guitar. Worship is not about if you have all the latest, greatest electronics. I mean, I, number one, I thank God we have been able to evolve into some great, great electronics. And it enhances so you can see the song. I mean, we are in a different day. Does that mean I'm going to do away with my foundation and my traditions? No, I'm not. I'm going to still uh, incorporate all that the rest of my life. But, but my salvation is not based on a worship song. My salvation is based on my walk with Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. So understand, I, I, in emotional, and, I, and, and I'm not a psychologist here. I've studied it. I, I've, I've, I know the psychology of people. I've been in ministry and dealt with people all of my life. I'm, and, and most of you understand what I'm talking about, it, it dealing with people. And, we, and we're all funny. I'm just saying it for y'all. Y'all are not smiling at me right now, but I'm just saying it for you. You're, uh, you're, 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 some of y'all are, are almost on the line of offendedness right now, but uh, God's going to let you help you get over it. And uh, uh, Because I, I'm not trampling on anybody's style of music. Now, I can't say that I get all the new stuff today. I don't understand. But if it's reaching a generation, I'm talking about true worship. Too much today is about lifestyle and not enough is about Jesus. Too much, and, and, I want, and I'm just going to say from my heart today, too, much, too many songs today is about the person, and it's not about singing out to Jesus Christ. That's what worship is all about. Now, I understand there's got to be a level of, of cry out. You know, we just sang a song, I surrender. I mean, it, it's, it's about me. It's not about me. It's about him. So if I can't worship with the latest or worship with something, if it takes a particular style, then something's wrong with my attitude inside. But however, the psychology of all of us is this. We all uh, 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 r- go over to a particular way we were raised and what blesses us. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we like that. And, and most of you listen to what, what blesses you and you find Jesus and find the attitude. Of, and that's awesome. It's great. But if we think just because something else comes on, say, well, I, ain't, I, can, I don't know, that's, I'm not going to worship to that. And, that. and that's not God because it's not. No, 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 no. How many this morning you feel like it don't matter what's happening, my worship is not about a style. My worship is about the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen? Now, if mo- most of you understand if you don't like one song we're singing, hang on. Most likely we're going to get something that you're going to like because we, we do a very a variety of stuff here, and that's my intent. Now, yes, we are going after a young family, that, uh, the, a generation, but that doesn't mean we're going to do everything just to reach. You know, I'm, we are not just seeker sensitive. We want to be Jesus sensitive. We want to be Holy Ghost sensitive here. Amen? And God will change something just on the fly sometimes. So the point is, is worship is spirit. And in truth, all worship must lift up the Lord, not the worshiper. Sometimes the worshiper gets in the way of true worship. Sometimes, understand, forms, there are forms and postures of worship in Scripture. There's bowing down, there's standing, there's dancing, there's clapping, and there's shouting unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. There's raising our hands, there's kneeling before the Lord. Sometimes we fall prostrate before the Lord and lay down in worship and prayer. Uh, there, there's leaping, and there's, there's uh, 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 the lying face down, there's singing, there's worship is prayer. How many understand worship is also confessing our sins? Public reading of the Word of God, preaching truth is worship. How many understand bringing your tithes and offerings is worship? It's all about worship, communion, the gifts of the Spirit. So worship, sometimes when we think, well, we're going to worship today, we're thinking about music. Worship is not just about music. 
There is so much a litany of worship in the Word. Acts 2, the early church lived a lifestyle of worship. It was not about music only and singing only. They worshiped in the temple daily. And as they went about their spirit-empowered day, every day their lives, they worshiped God. And the result of that, the church grew, and God established the church as they worshiped him. God says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. God is saying, I believe this, that a church that truly worships him is a church that's on the move. That was a good place to really shout right there. Amen. I said a church that's, that worships, that's learned how to really worship, that transcends all the styles. It doesn't matter about the style. It's a church that worships, is a church that God will bless. God says, the time is coming and it's here. He's a God is spirit and they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. In truth. Worship comes from the word worth-ship. It means living in a way that shows we value God above all else. It shows that he is worthy of our love. God is worthy of your loyalty. God is worthy of your efforts. God is worthy of your dancing unto the Lord. Every time you say amen, God is worthy of that. Every time you, you begin to sing unto the Lord and shout unto the Lord, let me tell you, there's not a time that God's not been worthy of that. He is worthy of your praise this morning. That's supernatural worship. Worship is not an event, but it's a lifestyle. Dick Brogdon said people love to worship. He's a missionary. He said people love to worship, and we were created for this purpose. But unfortunately, we often worship foolishly. We love rituals. We love rhythms and regularity because they comfort us. And though God designed us to worship, he did not intend that we glorify worship. Wow, that got quiet. Worship is a means to love and glorify Jesus, not the worshiper. And when worship is worshiped, Jesus is diminished. And nothing must diminish the glory of God, not even worship. I want to, tell you, I want to go to a scripture probably very unknown to most of us, but one that's very strong. Go to Amos chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. The prophet said it this way. He said, God's told, told him, he says, go to Bethel and sin. Go to Gilgal and sin yet more. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three years, but burn leavened bread as a thank offering and brag about your free will offerings. Boast about them, you Israelites, for this is what you love to do, declares the Lord. In other words, he was saying, God was saying to them, you going through the motions, you burn sacrifices, you bring all your offerings, and you act like you got worship on the outside, and that's what you love to do. What Amos was doing, he was pointing out that people have a tendency to fall in love with worship, and that becomes sin. Pastor, I, I, I don't know if I'm with you. Hang on. How many want to learn what true worship that changes your heart and attitude is all about. It's more than a song. Why does it take two or three songs to really get us shouting unto God? We ought to come in already shouting unto God. Why does it take a slow song? Well, we slow it down. Well, now we really get into that uh, real, real psychology, that deep depth, and we really get, you know, we get calmed down and we worship. We ought to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. That's what worship is all about. Can we worship if we had no music? Some of y'all can. Let me tell you, they didn't have the screens back, uh, even in my day. They didn't, uh, well, they did have, yeah, <laughs> I ain't going there. They had the other kind of screens. A lot has changed. But can we worship whether there's no music? Can we worship if we know that he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords? But here's the problem that happens in the church. Folks, I, I'm talking about supernatural worship, but sometimes worship becomes something that God never had intended it to be. And, I've even, and I'm seeing some of that in these last days. When it becomes a sin, it's because worship covers rebellion, and it's a sin. 
We cannot live in unconfessed or habitual sin and then trot over to church or small group or family devotion to sing and get our praise on and lift up our hands in praise with hypocrisy because it damages our lives and it grieves the Holy Ghost. Now, y'all said y'all weren't going to get offended a while ago. When worship is worshiped and we, it, it, when it covers rebellion, it's sin. Let me tell you, folks, Sometimes the most pious people can be the most bitter people. God is not impressed with those whose faithfulness to worship and devotions and prayer and Bible reading is eclipsed only by their consistently poor attitudes and assassinating tongues and hidden hate. You can't worship when you just got through bashing somebody and talking about somebody. I know you don't like this, and I don't like it either. But I'd rather have true worship that worships the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost and comes from a depth, not my tongue, and worships Him and Him only. I don't care if, and, and we have got, we have got the best music. God has blessed our team. God has blessed us with people that know how to worship God. But folks, it cannot be just a Sunday morning escapade and an experience. It's got to be an encounter with Jesus Christ. Worship that covers rebellion is not worship. We worship, understand, we worship because of who he is. Secondly, worship becomes problematic when worship is used as a drug. I don't know if I lost anybody on that one. I'm, I'm going to probably have some that's going to disagree with what I'm about to say. I'm looking at what I'm about to say, and I'm almost disagreeing with myself. Did I lose you on that one? Because my flesh is saying, but it, but it feels good. I like it. How many like the way you feel when you worship God? I'm setting y'all up. Get ready. Some of y'all lift your hand in your line because you know you love. Oh, it makes you feel, oh, it just cleanses. Oh, it just, oh, it, you know, it, we, we just worship. And I love that. So I'm reading this next line. I'm, I'm my next, next, next sentence, I'm, I'm, I'm having this thought going on in, the, in my mind. Say, okay, I'm. I like this, but, but folks, I understand the truth of what I'm about to tell you. Worship is not supposed to make us feel good. See, I told you I'd lose y'all. While worship is certainly satisfying... If we make our satisfaction the aim of worship, we've made it an idol. <laughs> yeah, I wrote, it's there in my notes. It's because what we have done, okay, I'm going to take we out of them, what I have done too often. It had to do with what I felt. If I don't feel something, then I must not really got in connection with God. And then Satan says, something's wrong with you. And we've made the aim of our worship to be those that make us feel good when the aim of our worship has not to do with us. It's about him. Now, I, 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 I can tell you, This is, this is going to just be plain, folks. I mean this. I don't want to do this, but it's easy to do this. I mean, understand you can move people with music. We can go because of psychology. Music will move you. It gets to the very core of who you are. Music, you can be feeling bad and turn your favorite music on in the car and be, be bopping down the road, and, and you'll start feeling good. Have you ever seen people in the, in the cars by, in, uh, at red lights? Have you ever seen people? They don't care. Some don't care. I mean, yeah, that's just. And you're driving by them. Worship or music 
can bring you back to a particular season in your life that was very special. Worship, you hear, how many understand you hear a particular song and it brings back a memory? That's not just a worship song, that's any song. Maybe a particular song that was, that was y'all's song. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. How many understand you had a song when you were dating? What y'all listen to this stuff for anyway? <laughs> we all did. We all got that song. Same way in when we worship the Lord. And this is something we have to make sure about. You can move people the same way with, quote, Christian songs, the same way you can with secular music. It's not about the song. It's about the emotion. Well, how do we worship? Well, we start out with a good fast song. We get people all excited and people walking into the services every Sunday morning. They're just, uh, go. And people get excited. They're, they're, everybody's happy. Well, most people are. Some people, they won't be happy for nothing. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're happy and they're excited and they're worshiping. Hallelujah. They're looking around. They're shaking hands. Oh, good to see you. Yeah. You know, glory to God. They're inside. They're inside. And no other name that's higher. Yeah, we're just singing out. We're just, it's just, it just sounds good and we're moved. I'll never forget, I, I will never forget, I got, y'all, I got to stop. I know we got afternoon activities, and I was, I was going to stop at 12 o'clock today. Oh, help me, Jesus. I remember growing up on some of this, too. we'd get to that, we'd, we'd, we'd get to that 4-4 double B. We'd get, uh, uh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all, when we all see, you know, we, I, I'm telling you what, I, and I know I'm old school in some of y'all. Y'all have no clue what I'm talking about. I'm telling you, it would move our church. It would move me, and I'd get, that's, what I, that's my stuff I was raised on. That's why I go old school. I'd, 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 I could jam out with some of that old stuff, play and get the 4-4 four, four going on, the uh, drums, and get the guard. And I, I'm telling you what, it moves me. I, come on, bring it, baby. You know, I, I love it. But just because it sounds good and feels good and everything's going good doesn't mean it's God. Just because I sing a song that somebody else wrote serving and seeking God doesn't mean I'm in the same attitude and strength of where they're at. It just means I love music. I was raised on it. Is everybody okay? I want to ask our worship team to come real quick. Oh, and by the way, this thought just hit me. Our worship team is not just those that's coming to the stage. That's all of us. Would you stand with me? Now, I ain't, I'm not done yet. You probably said, well, why'd you make a stand? Hang on. Dick Brogdon said it this way. He said, worship is not supposed to make us feel good, while worship is certainly satisfying. If we make our satisfaction the aim of worship, we've made it an idol. He said, we have diminished the worth of Jesus and treated worship as an over-the-altar drug. Worship is not about us. It's about Jesus. If we worship only when we feel like it, or in order to feel better, we demonstrate that Jesus is worthy only of occasional adoration. We're called to worship Jesus because of who he is. And the purest worship is not based on feelings or emotions. We worship because of who God is, not because of what we feel or hope to feel. Amen? Now that does not mean we don't feel when we worship. Feeling is not the highest thing. Feeling should come as a result that I'm gotten into the presence of Jesus. If that's a hymn, praise God. If that's a chorus, praise God. If that's just me on my face before God and there's nothing going on but just me and Jesus, 
praise God. Worship is about Him. Is it okay to like a particular style? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead. I do. I love having worship on, music on, and praying times, you know, because it just kind of connects me, gets me into that scope of who, just calming me. I understand one of the best things you can do for a stressed out life is to worship. Amen. Anybody here need to get rid of some stress? Worship. There's another thing about worship that's negative. When worship is used to gain attention, it's a sin. Some people lift their hands, sing loudly, jump around, or leap worship in such a way that the Father turns his head away. God is insulted when we offer to others what we should be only presenting to him. It ain't about me. It's not about you. It's not about how loud I can sing. It's about him. It's about him. When we come in expecting, not to get my praise on, but just simply to come in and to lift up the name above every name. If I cry, great. If I smile, great. If I feel good, great. If I don't feel good, I'll never forget what I heard, wrote, or read years ago, a few years ago in a book um, by Mark Batterson, one of our Assemblies of God ministers up in Washington, D.C. He said, don't let what's wrong with you stop you from worshiping what's right with him. I'll never forget it. God said it this way. He said, do not worship any other God for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Don't worship the electronics. Don't worship the lights. Don't worship, wow, it takes lights. to. Let me tell you, folks, it don't take lights. It doesn't take anything else to worship God. It takes a person that says, God, I worship you in spirit and in truth. If it takes something else to make you worship God, then it's, uh, it's become an idol to you. It's only about you and Jesus. Our worship is not to be seen, it's to be make to make sure that God is seen and glorified. Our worship of God is must be the hunger and thirst of our souls, longing for restoration to the one who created us. Christopher, put that up there real quickly. I'm gonna just run through these just 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 in a second or two. Number one, worship brings intimacy to our relationship with God. Secondly, worship submits us to its lordship. When we worship, we make him Lord. And worship helps us focus on him and not on my problem. It brings understanding. Worship refreshes my spirit. When I worship God, it brings freshness to my relationship with God. I, my relationship with God should be fresh and exciting. Fourthly, worship is a celebration. Psalms 95. Would you take your Bible up and step out and come around this house, this, this front here? Come on. I want us to come together. We're going to take the last five minutes and just worship. Bring your Bible with you. Turn to Psalms 95. Bring your Bible, your phone, your iPad, whatever you got in the Bible on. Because we're going to read this together. And we're going to worship at this altar. It's okay. Step out. In the name of Jesus. This is what worship is about. And it may be up on the screen if you want to put it up there, son. Psalms 95, verse number one says, I want you to read it out. Now, if you're reading it, whatever version you're reading, I'm, I'm reading for the New International. Read yours from the King James or uh, NASB, whatever you have. Doesn't matter if we're reading it differently. It's all saying the same thing. Read this aloud with me. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. 
The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Say it aloud with me. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Verse 1 again says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Can we just take a moment and just, with nothing else, not being prompted to sing, not being prompted to do anything else, you can shout, you can not shout, you can stand, you can sit, you can kneel, whatever. But right now, would you just worship the Lord? There's not a right word to say. There's not a right song to sing. Worship is just simply saying, God, you're worthy. You're worthy of my praise. You're worthy of me to lift my hands up to you, Lord, because you are supernatural, God. You are magnificent. You are holy. You are glorious. You are strong and mighty. You are God. You created me. Just tell him what he means to you. That's worship. People say, well, I, I, I don't feel I'm worthy. Let me tell you, it's not about your worth. It's about God's worth. I don't feel I'm able to. Yes, you are. It's just simply telling our Father who art in heaven hallowed be your name worthy is your name Lord I worship you Lord I praise you I'm telling you folks if we get to that place where we'll truly worship God in spirit and in truth be unlimited what God will do in this house 